In the fear of God, then listen to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the evangelist, the fourth and pure disciple, may his blessings be on the Solomon, a psalm of our teacher David, the prophet and king, may his blessings be on the Solomon. The Lord has been mindful of us, He will bless us, He will bless the Lord of Israel, He will bless the house of Aaron, He will bless us if He is the Lord, but small and great. Amen. Amen. Comes in the name of the Lord. I know God, Savior, and the King of us, Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. The Pharisees had heard that Jesus made them baptize more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself did not baptize by his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sika. Neither plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob was there, Jesus was therefore being married from his journey. Sad thus by the well, it was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples have gone away into the city to buy food. <coughs> then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me? A Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, do it is, he says to you, give me a drink. He would have asked him and he would have had given you the living water. Then the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is dead. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself. As well as his sons and all his livestock, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But in the water that I shall give him will be coming him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, oh, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have not said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you do say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jer Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, his disciples came. <coughs> and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, What do you seek, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left the water pot, went her way to the city, and said to the man, 
Come see him and he told me all things, that's why they did, could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples searched him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I fit eat, of which you do not know. Therefore his disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, I finished to the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Do you not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest, and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruits for eternal life. The birth in his sows and he who reaps may rejoice together, for in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you have not labored, others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days and met more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Saviour of the world. is the third week of the holy 50 days after resurrection. If we look to the, our Great Lent, every week have names. Exactly what happened in the uh, 50 days after resurrection, every week have names. First week was Thomas Sunday. Second week was Jesus, the bread of life. Today, Jesus is the living water or water of life. That's the third week today. And if we, if we was hearing the story about the Samaritan woman, just only two months ago, the church read this about the repentance, because all great Lent was about repentance. And today, the best part they choose from the Bible about Jesus living water is this part. If we look to all the four Gospels, the only Gospel wrote this, this story, the book of St. John, and we found in chapter 4. Some scholars said, because as we read, the disciple went to buy food, but they said St. John, he, was, he didn't go with them, he was bit far, but he was hearing the story, that's why he's the only one write this story, Samaritan woman. If we look today again, the time Jesus chose to meet the Samaritan woman was the sixth hour. Sixth hour was exactly the hour Jesus was on the cross. Jesus was on the cross in the sixth hour, he thirsty for the salvation of all world, and exactly the sixth hour he went to the lady, he thirsted to bring her to God, to know God. And if we look, he told her, I am, the, I am thirsty, to start the dialogue with her. And exactly when he was across, in top of the cross, he was thirsty to get everyone to know him and everyone to Christ. Jesus, in, in the Gospel today, he teaches us two or three teachings. First one, he's the living water. Everyone testing the living water, he wants to tell everyone about how beautiful this living water. Jesus, he's teaching us the living water, he's the living water. Second point, we'll talk about how we can get 
be able to taste living water. And third one, we are son and daughter of God, how we can be a good example to show people how we are son and daughter of God. Dr. Hogar is the one very famous writer, Christian writer. They asked him what the what the best than the ocean. He told them the better than the ocean is the heaven. And he asked them, he told them, the better than the heaven to bring someone sinner to Christ. Because when someone sinner comes to the Christ, all the heaven be happy. More than 99 people, they not know God. Another story, they asked one of the president of country, Christian one, they told him, after you achieve this high position, after all the education you have, what's the best after this? He said, the best after this, I leave everything and start <coughs> preaching people to get them to Christ. That's more better than all what I had before. When we pray and we say, our Father who art in heaven, our Father, that means all of us here, brother and sister. As I'm not going to care only about myself. I should care about my brother and sister, not only in the church, should be at work, at family, at everyone I know. I have to present the Christ, present it as by myself and talk about Christ to them. One was old man, he know Christ. After he know Christ and he was very happy, he testing the living water, he get his list and start writing how many people I know, how many people I work with, how many people in my family. He starts writing 116 names, and he said, I have to start to talk to them, all of them, about Christ. And he starts one by one. After two years, he said, I bring 100 for them to Christ. 100 from out 116. Because he tests the living water. He wants everyone to test the same water he tests. This water, when you drink it, you never get rest again. But the earthly water, they call it salty water. Whatever you drink, you never can have enough. Like, whatever position you have at work, you want to get bigger. You have car, you want to be get better. You have house, you want to get two story. You have one, you want two. This is the earthly water, salty water. Whatever we have, not enough. But if you know Christ and you test the living water, it's have enough and it can be enough to tell everyone else about Christ. This Samaritan woman, we found here, when she tested the living water, she left everything, even her pot. She was going to get water, she left it. And start running and tell everyone, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? She started to be the first preacher in the, in the Bible, even before the disciples, to go preach around the nation. She was before them. Tradition of the church, they said, after Jesus was crucified, St. Philip went to this Samaritan uh, Samaria, and he preaching over there, he start baptize them, she get baptized, she and another two boys, she has two boys, and they went to preach in Rome, and here two kids being killed in Rome, preaching for Christ, and she died in Rome too. So she started preaching everyone, she didn't stop, and she didn't embarrass to say, I was a sinner or anything. She told them, come see someone, he told me, all I did. She not have enough sin, she has five husbands before, and she living with someone, not her husband. She never embarrassed, she testing the living water, she started preaching to tell everyone about the living water. Come see Christ. And all the cities start to know Christ, and they start following him. If we look to the one like the mother Therese, she was one, one day she was looking after 20,000 people. 20,000 people. She go India, she go all this poor country looking after them. She has people helping her. They start to give her washing machine to wash for the people. She said, no, who doesn't want all this? And she start to by hand, by hand to show them love and to show these people we caring about you. And she get many, many people to Christ. Look to Santa Anthony. When end of the day he go to the heaven of paradise, look how many people can follow Saint Anthony and go heaven with him, and look to each us how many people you talk to him about Christ, how many? With two brothers in America, they was living next to the coast, and one day they saw a big sheep, and the sheep start sinking in the water. One of them, his name Edwards, he can't 
stand to see people start drawing the water. He come quick and told, can I help? They said, all right, he doesn't know much to swim. They tied him with rope, and he started coming to the water, save one. He come back, save two. He very tired, he saw someone, nearly died. He go again, and again, about six, seven people he saved, and ten people, he, until they try to save as much as they can. And the time go on, the time go on, one priest, he hears the story. He was teaching in another church, and after the sermon, the priest told him, by the way, Edward, he is one of our members. They got him and told him, how was the story? He said the story was exactly the same, <laughs> there is no change, but I am can't preaching people, but I thank God my story get many people to serve God and to, to preaching about Christ. How we looking after each one, how we try to save everyone. Maybe he saved these people earthly or saved them by body, but how we save people by spirit and spiritual. One of the preachers went to India to preach about Christ, he and about five, ten people. And the wind first day he started, he told them, they have meetings, they pray, they read Bible, he said, if every one of us get 50 people in this trip, by like one year we can get all this village to be a Christian. So one of the son of the preacher, he's 12 years old, he told him, Dad, pray for me because my friend is Indian. And I tried to talk to him about Christ. So after one week, two weeks, the boys start talking to him about Christ. So when they give the sermon to the church, they found the Indian boy and his father coming to the church. And they start to talk to him about Christ. They baptize them. The little boy, 12 years old, he told them that I get two, still 48 more, I try to get to Christ. So he caring like everyone. He said, everyone get 50, I try to get 50 like everyone. People, they didn't see Christ, but people, they know we are a Christian. People, they see Christ in us. How we can present Christ? How we can present Christ? Did we present Christ as a we are, not the Christ, or we ego, or whatever? Or will be humble to present them, present Christ to them? One preacher went to visit someone in jail. He told him, look, you kill someone, they can kill you. Look what you've done, you have to repent now so you go heaven. The, the prisoner he told him, listen, I killed one before, but I can kill two now. He went back to the church, he told him, I try to talk to him about God, he doesn't accept. Another bitch, he told him, preacher, give me his name, he won't visit him. He said, listen, my friend, Jesus, he come to save us, I am the sinner, and you too. And Jesus come to me and you. And he started humbling himself, talk to him about Christ. He believed in Christ and he started to change his life and repent before they judge him. Randy, Mahmatir Randy, everyone, he know him. He used to say, I love Christ, but I don't love the Christian. Because what he sees the Christian do. But he say, I love, I love Christ, but I don't love the Christian. How we present Christ to people, people they see Christ on us. Each thing we do, people watching us. One English preacher went to a small village. They said the new preacher coming. So he takes the bus to go to the church. So what happened, the driver, he cut the ticket, the driver gave him the change. The preacher sit down in the chair, he starts counting the change, he found he gave him 50 cents extra. So all the trip he said, did he make mistake? or he gave it to me extra, or did I really care to give him the 50 cents back or not? Until he went to the end of the trip, before he take off, come off the bus, he told the driver, this is the 50 cents, he gave it me extra. The driver, he told them, I know I give you the 50 cents extra to see, did you really can I keep it, or you honestly can give me back? Look, the driver, he said to him, he knows that is this man, you know Christ, but he really breaching what he doing, or no, that's people testing. The, the driver told him, I was looking for a church to go, but when I saw you, I said, I do this one to see, I can follow your church or not. With one little thing, he can accept the soul and bring the soul to Christ or not. Last story to show us how people present in Christ and how we are from these people. Was one, two boy, one, his name Paul and Peter. This happened in Egypt, it was a nice story. 
One of them was social worker. His job was visiting people in jail. One day, he visited one boy who was very tough and aggressive and all his life. He finished his jail term, he go back. He finished his jail term, he go back. So he started to do search about his case. He found the problem was from his parents and his father was very tough with him and all his background. He targeted, he found him victim for the society he was living. So he started to talk to him as a friend and he started to know him. This time his term finished. Paul and Peter, the father was passed away, they living with their mom, they was very rich family. So he asked his mom, this guy, he finishing his term, he has no one in his family to go. Can we accept him in our home? She said, all right, we accept him. They get the prisoner at home after he finished the term and they start show him the house. Even the boy, the prisoner, he said, this first time I see bed like this, I see house like this. He, after he sleeps, they knock the door, told him, come, we have dinner together. Now you are our member in the family. They start to show him everything, and they told him, this is the watch we inherited from my father, and my father inherited from his grandfather. It's a gold watch worth this amount of money. After they have dinner, he went to his bedroom again, and all night he can't sleep. He said, why? I'm not going to steal this watch. I can do business, and I'm not going to independ in anyone again. This is my opportunity to be debt free and I can start my business and live like normal people. He let everyone sleep, he opened the cupboard, he takes the watch and opened the door, he found the gate, how, the gate of the backyard locked. He started to get the watch in his pocket and jump on the fence, the police arrest him. They ring the owner of the house, the lady, and they told the hair, we caught a thief, he stole watch, golden watch from your home and come pick up your watch. She wake up her son and told him, come quick, we have to go to the police station because that's what happened. They went to the police station, she saw the guy, she hugged him, and she told the officer, this one of our relatives, he took the watch to fix it. But the officer he told her he was jumping from your fence. She said, no, no, maybe he doesn't want to wake us. That's why he tried to not waking us, so that's why he tried to jump. She took the boy with her and the gold watch and told the, I told, and they took him in the car and told him, don't worry about what happened, come back with us. He said, no, I can't come with you, you are too generous for me. And he started to cry, they said, forget about it, you come, don't worry about what you've done. He said, no, I'm not coming. Stop the car, I have to leave now. They stopped the car, he left, and the time go and go and go. After a long time, this lady get paralyzed. Her two sons was very good servants in the church. So they asked Abuna to pray on them, and she sees the doctor, and so on. Someone advised them, they said, in the monastery, there's someone, he got a talent from God to heal the sick, go and visit the monastery. Well, first time they was, went to the monastery, this monk, he only come once a week. They didn't see him. They went another time, they saw the monk, so one of them, he stopped him, he said, please, can you pray for mom? She can heal. He said, all right. He started to brain here, brain here, the lady healed. And after he healed the lady, he told her, do you remember me? She said, no. He told her, I was with you 20 years ago. I am the one come to your home. And you show me the Christ. I never know anything about Christ. But after you're generous with me, you and your two sons, I can't handle to live outside the world. After I left you in the car, I went to the monastery. And now I'm living in my own cave, and thank God he gave me this talent to heal people. And now he healed her, and his story was known everywhere. To show people presenting Christ, how, he can again, how these people gain someone to Christ. Maybe the time can come on and they never can see him. But when you go to heaven, you see which one you talk to him about Christ. How many people you get them to the Christ? You're caring about yourself and your family, that's fair enough. But what about your brother and sister, like we call God our Father? Our brother and sister in the world, what we can do to them? And what we're going to do to them? This is the question we ask us today. The Samaritan woman was very smart, she knew her way. She started straight away, talk to people about Christ. And what's our way, what we're going to do? 
Pray for me and have a nice uh, 50 holidays. Thank you. Uh...